In 1863, a sensational wedding in New York was a welcome distraction from the then dire news from the American Civil War. The acclaimed couple were even guests of President Abraham Lincoln at the White House and were soon to embark on a three-year world tour. Both the groom, who had become known as General Tom Thumb, and his wife Lavinia Warren were performers in the famous P.T. Barnum travelling circus and shared a condition known as proportionate dwarfism. People possessing these perfectly miniaturised characteristics were considered desirable assets by sideshows and curio museums of that era. At that stage, medical science was at a loss to even diagnose, let alone treat the condition, now thought to be a growth hormone deficiency related to the pituitary gland. Tom Thumb, born Charles Sherwood Stratton in 1838, had been a large baby who had simply stopped growing at the age of five months. He had been tracked down by Barnum when four years old in his home state of Connecticut. The showman had made a deal with the boy's father, a local carpenter, to pay him $3 a week to exhibit young Charles in New York. He had taught the child to sing, dance and do impressions of famous people and also found that Charles possessed natural talent. General Tom Thumb shot to fame very quickly and by the age of six, he and Barnum were providing a command performance to Queen Victoria in Buckingham Palace. His family were now receiving the enormous salary of $50 per week. Lavinia hailed from Massachusetts. During her teens, she had worked as a well-respected schoolteacher before then going to perform as a miniature dancing chanteuse on a cousin's Mississippi showboat. Born Mercy Lavinia Bump, she too changed her name under Barnum's management, Warren being a family name. Lavinia had also been romantically pursued by another little performer, a then teenager who carried the moniker of Commodore Nutt, his actual name George Washington Morrison Nutt. Another of Barnum's finds, he was provided with a wardrobe of miniature naval uniforms and a small carriage which was drawn by Shetland ponies. Shaped to look like an English walnut, the carriage had a hinged top which could be lifted to reveal the small Commodore sitting inside. Barnum thought it the best publicity possible to have Nutt driven around New York by his brother, also a proportionate dwarf, dressed in the uniform of a coachman. Barnum was also planning the stunning spectacle of the wedding of Tom and Lavinia. He had been refused when he asked the disappointed Nutt to be best man. However, Nutt later agreed when personally approached by Tom himself. Lavinia also had a sibling who had proportionate dwarfism, her sister Minnie Warren, who like her was an entertainer associated with Barnum. She agreed to be bridesmaid at the elaborate society wedding, which was held on February 10, 1863 at Grace Episcopal Church. The reception at the Metropolitan Hotel featured the newlywed couple, just 32 and 40 inches in height, greeting guests while standing on top of the grand piano. While admission to the so-called fairy wedding was free, Barnum made sure that his business reaped maximum publicity and profits from the extravaganza. For weeks before the wedding, crowds of 20,000 or more sightseers paid to view the bride and her engagement ring, with takings topping $3,000 a day. Barnum also sold tickets to the reception for $75 each, in today's money, $2,500. The tickets were simply allocated to the first 5,000 people to apply. The day after the wedding, the New York Times reported on the occasion with the headline, The Loving Lilliputians. The article noted that a long stretch of Broadway over several blocks was literally packed for hours with an eager and expectant crowd, which lines of policemen struggled to control. Harper's Weekly adorned its cover with an engraving of the married couple. The event provided a much-needed diversion for a public receiving daily bad news from the Civil War, which was going badly for the Union at that point. 
On their honeymoon trip, Tom and Lavinia were provided with a special reception by President Abraham Lincoln and his wife at the White House. Their performing career continued to earn them great acclaim, and in the late 1860s, the couple set off on a three-year world tour, which included appearances as far-flung as Japan, China, Australia and India. They were now a genuine worldwide phenomenon, wealthy and living in a luxurious house in New York City. However, Lavinia did later write in her autobiography of the downside. The little people had always been presented as childlike to the public by P.T. Barnum. This had been his advertising strategy to make the audience feel sympathetic towards them in order to sell more tickets. Despite being amongst some of the most famous adults in the US at the time, because of the way they were presented, people treated them like children. Many of those Lavinia met wanted to pet and hold her, and she found it seemingly impossible to make people understand that she was not a child, but a woman. She therefore had what she saw as the womanly instinct of shrinking from inappropriate familiarity. Despite her discomfiture with how she was viewed by people, Lavinia continued to perform and even saw herself as belonging to the public. There was also a mysterious aspect to the couple's life together. In a few of Tom and Lavinia's performances, they would be holding a baby, which was announced to the audience as their own child. There are also several publicity shots of Lavinia nursing an infant. Some scholars have suggested that Barnum simply rented a child from local foundling homes for performances. Another source claims that their marriage did produce one child who unfortunately was not considered photogenic enough so that another baby was borrowed for publicity photos. It seems that their real child, a daughter named Minnie, in fact passed away at age two while on tour with her parents. Tom Thumb's obituary in the New York Times read that the couple did have a child of normal size born in 1869, but that he or she died in 1871, although Minnie's tombstone gives the year as 1866. The couple continued to perform until the 1880s, when they retired to Middleborough, Massachusetts, where they had arranged for a mansion to be built with custom-made small furniture. In 1883, the couple's diminutive statues worked in their favour when they were caught in the deadly Newhall House Hotel fire while staying in Wisconsin. A firefighter named O'Brien managed to get a ladder up to their sixth floor room, clasping the tiny couple under one arm and clenching the swaying ladder with the other, he made his way cautiously down through the flames to safety. It is estimated that up to 90 other guests and staff perished in the inferno that night, one of the worst hotel fires in American history. The disaster may have also impacted Tom's health, as six months later he succumbed to a sudden stroke at age 45. Two years later, Lavinia married fellow thespian and little person the Italian Count Primo Magri, his title being genuine rather than a Barnum fantasy name. The couple gathered together a performing troupe which travelled the world, entertaining the public and royalty. Again, Queen Victoria enjoyed a little person's performance at Buckingham Palace. At age 73, Lavinia appeared alongside Count Magri in a 1915 silent film called The Lilliputian's Courtship. Five years later, she predeceased the much younger Count and was buried beside her first husband, Charles Stratton, a.k.a. General Tom Thumb. Strangely, despite Lavinia's fame, her tombstone simply described her as his wife, an inadequate tribute to what was her vibrant, bold and very big life. 